Hi everybody, I'm Pia from Stitches and Scraps. Today I'm going to show you how to embroider these chain borders and snowflakes that I've used on this bag. This bag is bag number six in the 2022 Bag Along Crochet Along on Stitches and Scraps. You'll find a link to the crochet along and to this bag pattern in the description on the video. In each corner we have a column of unused loops from where we worked into the back loop only, leaving the front loop exposed to make this kind of a ladder. We're going to work our chain over the rungs of this ladder. So find the bottom most exposed loop and insert your hook underneath it. For this particular one it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent whether you go in between the legs of that stitch into the center of the stitch or whether you go underneath that stitch into the base of the stitch. I did the base of the stitch here, so I'm gonna do the base of the stitch here. And I'm going to pull up a loop of white from inside the bag. So I'm holding my yarn inside the bag and I have a tail sitting here that's probably a little too long. There we go. I have a tail sitting here that I'll weave in later. And I'm tensioning the yarn with my hand inside the bag. So now I'm going to start chaining underneath the loops of each of these. So I'm going to insert my hook under that loop, under that loop. Where is it going when I go under the loop? Well, if we peel this back, you'll see that underneath this loop is a tiny little stitch right there. There's the V of the stitch that's going into the back loop behind this loop, right? When I stick my hook down in underneath that loop, it's actually going right into that same back loop. So you don't have to look for it, just stick your hook down and it'll naturally slide into that space. So now I'm going to grab my yarn and pull it through and make a slip stitch. So this is called surface crochet and we're basically just making slip stitches over the top of each of these exposed loops. So I find the next loop, I stick my hook underneath, I pull up a loop of white from the bottom. Insert my hook, pull up a loop of white, really. You might find it easier to hold the yarn differently than you do when you normally crochet too. So let your hands do what they do. They will find a comfortable way to hold it. Tension is very important. You wanna make sure your stitches are all nice and even as you work up this chain. So you can see I'm just going in underneath each of these vertical bars that are here. These remaining unused front loops. And I'm working a little slip stitch. So I pull up a loop and pull it right through the loop that's on my hook. And when I get to the top, I'm gonna to go right under this loop, which is the, the front loop of the very top stitch there, and just finish off there. Your top doesn't matter as much because it's gonna be sewn to the purse frame, so you're not gonna see what's up here anyway. And then I just fasten off my yarn. And that chain is done. If you have these little wobbles where it's a little bit uneven, you can try to even that out with a darning needle. Just kind of wiggle the stitches till they look a little more even. If you've got one that's very big, you can even like pull the yarn, you know, massage the yarn through the next couple of stitches to kind of even it out. And then you are done with your chain. So now let's make some snowflakes in the middle. Having the stitches lined up perfectly like this makes it really easy to embroider this snowflake. So first pick where you want your snowflake to start. I'm just gonna put one eh, right here. How about right there, okay? And bring up your yarn from the bottom. Leave that tail, you're gonna sew that in later. Okay, so this snowflake, I'm gonna start with a vertical line. I'm gonna do one vertical and one horizontal so you can see how they rotate. So I'm going to go down, let's go one, two, three, four, five. Let's go there, let's go six stitches. Six is a good number for snowflakes. And that made one little bar, 
right? Now I want to do diagonal lines and you're going to have to just eyeball the placement of where you want it, but you can mirror it really easily. So I'm going to start, I think I want here. I think that right there actually. Let's see if I go like that. No, that's too far here. Okay, so what that is, is I've come across one stitch and then half a stitch. So I'm between the two stitches and then down one stitch. So I go, let me zoom in more so you can see that more. Okay, so if I, I'm in the center of the stitch now. If I went across one stitch, that's there. Across a half a stitch gets me between these two stitches and then down by one stitch puts me right there. So I'm gonna come, or down by one row. So now I'm gonna come up there, okay? And then I'm gonna mirror that here. So I go across by one stitch and then a half a stitch. And then I go up by one row and I'm gonna go in right there. And that gives me that diagonal line. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here, across by one and then a half, okay? And then down by one row right there. So I go right there, okay? And then I mirror that here, across by one and a half, up by one, I go down right here, okay? And that has made the base of my snowflake. So I've got my six spokes, and now I'm gonna put just little, I don't know, like feathers or whatever you call the little tips on these snowflakes. So for my first little end, I'm gonna go over just about a half a stitch, okay? and up a little bit too. So I'm just kind of at a little diagonal. See the little diagonal line? And I'm gonna come back a little bit here. So I'm actually gonna go straight across and come in underneath this spoke right there. Okay, and then I'm gonna come down here about the same distance that I went there and go back down in that same spot where I went down on this one. And that's put the little tail on that spoke. So I do the same thing all the way around all of these spokes. Now, if you don't like something you did, like I don't like that bottom one, don't be afraid to rip it out and redo it because otherwise you'll be unhappy with it. And that's no good. We don't want unhappy snowflakes. So that one was a little too close. So let me just go there instead. There we go. And I think I'm gonna like that better. Much better. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Each snowflake is going to be totally unique and different. There we go. So now we have our first snowflake. And you can play with it. You can do other things, you know, put the spokes farther down, do an additional line around the center, whatever floats your boat, make your snowflakes yours. Let's do a rotated one. Let's do one that's horizontal without putting any spokes on it. I'll just do a small one. So let's do it right here, say. Okay, or is that too close? Let's do it right here. I'll just do a really tiny one, okay? I'm gonna come up, and on this one, I'm only gonna go over three stitches. So just, let me get that tail out of the way. Just to right here. So that's given me a horizontal line instead of the vertical line. And now I'm gonna do the same thing I did to do the, to do the diagonal lines, the same thing I did before to kind of space them. So let's go up one stitch and over half a stitch. Let's try that. Up one stitch, over half a stitch. Down one stitch, over half a stitch. Up one stitch, over half a stitch. 
up one stitch and over half a stitch. And then from here, down one stitch and over half a stitch. So there we have a tiny little snowflake that doesn't need anything else. It's done just like it is right there. So you can make any kind of snowflakes you want all the way around your pattern, all the way around your bag. Now, one thing to pay attention to as you're traveling from snowflake to snowflake, you don't want these really big floats here. Okay, I left this one just to show you, but if you see a big float like that, like you accidentally made one, you can tack it down. So come across the back here, just pick up some loops just back here. You don't want it to show on the front, okay? And then make a little stitch over that float so that it's not gonna catch on things when you throw it in the bag right? That's the goal. You want to be able to throw stuff in your bag without it catching on anything. So we're going to keep our stitches pretty tight throughout here as we travel from one spot to the other. The other option is to break your yarn with every snowflake so that the inside of your bag is really nice and neat. And that's totally a good idea too. Or you can use the tutorial from our last project and make yourself a lining because this is a box bottom bag just like the one we made there it's just much smaller okay so now I've covered that up and it's not going to snag on anything when I put stuff into the bag so if I want to travel more neatly to my next spot I'm gonna just kind of pick up just a little bit of each of these stitches across the back just like that until I get to where I want to be. And like I said, the neatest way to do this would be to break the yarn for every snowflake and weave it all in in the same spot. Now when I finish this side and I have a little bit more left to do yet, I'm going to call this the front and I'm only going to embroider the front panel and then the back panel here. Um, I still have to do the columns there and then I'll embroider that back panel there. And I'm not going to do the sides because I like the way it looks with the sides being blank and these panels nicely bordered, you know, with snowflakes in the middle. So when this bag is finished, if we make it nice and square again, okay, the top is going to go into it like this. And then when it closes up, what's going to happen is these ends are going to fold down like that. So the closed bag will look something like this like that and see i think that looks nice with just the embroidered panel on the front so i'm going to stop with the front and the back but you're welcome to do embroidery all the way around if you want and there i have my chain border and the pretty snowflakes on the front and the back of the bag if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, or leave me a comment. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great videos. Thanks for watching!